Et voilà, guys, this is our final attention mechanism. Hello, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we will be talking about attention mechanism, why it is so important, why it is, from my perspective, the main foundation of the Transformers, which itself have taken over all the major areas of AI, like NLP, computer vision, reinforcement learning, you name it. But we don't, we won't be talking too much about Transformers today. It's really like we're paying attention to attention. Ha, that's a funny line. And yeah, so if you're just interested in the coding of attention, just skip to the hands-on attention part of the video, which will be in the end. But if you're also interested or you want to learn more about attention, how it actually works, and which area it originates from, then stay with me for the whole video. And yeah, let's start with the theoretical background of the attention mechanism. Okay, first I want to talk about like the intuition behind attention. Why would we introduce something like attention to a neural model? Why it is important? So the construction of neural networks is already originated or follows the idea how we think the human brain works for having like trillions of neurons. And the same happened with the attention, like paying attention to different things. Now we have so many information we gain at the same time, like our sight, hearing, tasting or smelling, you know, and, but we can't focus on all the information at all times. So we subconsciously, not always consciously, paying attention to different kind of information. So if you want to feel your heartbeat right now, you would more pay attention, like basically to your, to your body, while if you were paying attention to all red things around you, you will be paying more attention to your visual information. And this is basically how we perceive the whole day. So we are just focusing on relevant information and neglecting not important information at that time, even though we're conceiving it. And this is what was tried to, to bring it to neural models. So we have a lot of information, but we are just paying attention to the most relevant one and not like all information available. Okay, guys, I had to change my location, but that won't stop us from doing that video. And um, yeah, first attention was introduced to the area of machine translation. And let's look back to the year 2014 to better understand why we needed something like attention, why it is helpful. And for this, we see uh, this architecture. This basically based uh, back in the days how machine translation models looked like. So we had like an encoder decoder architecture. On the left hand side, you see the encoder, which at the end produces a context vector, which yeah, like this context vector embeds all the information, represents all the input tokens we have, like the whole sequence. And it could be a short sentence, could also be a long sentence, but we always have to represent it or embed it into this fixed size context vector. And then it is transmitted or like passed to the decoder, which then decodes and translates that language. And as you can maybe imagine, it's hard to, sentence varies, right? And we have shortened sentences, we have longer sentences, but we have to embed all of them in the same fixed size context vector, which was a huge like bottleneck for those networks. And we like, um, we needed something else basically. Uh, this is when attention came into place. Another thing is it's like an auto regressive model. So, you know, we have to uh, calculate all these different encoder cells step by step and also the decoder cells are computed step by step and each cell is dependent by the previous cell. So, you know, computing those machine translation model or the inference time was very long, which also was a downside of it. But the main issue were still the fixed size context vectors because especially for long sequences, those models weren't performing really good. Translating was kind of, yeah, not the best. And that's why in 2014, Baranau and others introduced the following architecture. Yeah, bringing or including the, for the first time an attention mechanism. And as you can see, this attention mechanism allowed the model to access, like in each decoder cell, all the encoder hidden states. So instead of having one fixed size vector, we can access all the encoder hidden states and let the specific decoder cell decide what encoder hidden state is important for that specific token we have in the decoder. And this idea was basically then new and that's why it's called attention. Okay, so the idea of attention allows each decoder cell to access all the encoder hidden states at each time step. And the decoder cell basically takes the state of the previous cell and can then query the relevance of all the encoder hidden states for that actually token 
that is to be translated at a specific time step. And yeah, that, that was pretty new that a specific decoder cell could access all the encoder hidden states. Okay, now we talked a lot about intuition and architecture wise, how attention works. Now let's look into the map to really understand how attention actually works like on the low level. For this, we calculate three different things. The alignment score, weights or attention weights, and a context vector. Don't get confused. It's not like uh, the context vector we had before, which is like a fixed size. I mean, like it's still fixed size, but now we're calculating a context vector for each decoder cell, while before we had one context vector for all decoder cells. So the alignment scores basically gives us information about how relevant a certain input token is to that particular word we would like to translate right now. Like, let's say we, we're in the decoder at position two and would like to translate that word. For that, we assess all the different input words uh, and calculate for each input token or input word uh, alignment score to assess how relevant that is to translate the uh, word right now. So most common, it's like the highest relevance is, has the word that is translated right now. But for example, sometimes, you know, since grammar is different in different languages, the arrangement of words varies and then we are in the second position and the decoder, but actually the word in the input uh, sentences at the position three, and then we would pay the highest relevance to that input word at position three. And the butter now and others used for that an alignment model, which can be a feed forward model, and to basically calculate the score, how how, how good a uh, certain input word is matching that particular output or decoder word. So the attention score is defined as follows. We have our attention score EIJ, <laughs> a little bit hard to pronounce for me. And this is calculated by our attention model, which is like the A function. And um, we have our previous hidden or like previous decoder state, which is SI minus one. So we're basically now calculating the relevance for the decoder step i that's like why we have i minus one it's like the previous state and then we're assessing all the hidden encoder states which are like h j so j is basically an indicator or an index for all the different uh, input words or input tokens we have so as a next step we will take all our alignment scores and basically compress them into a probability distribution so all the alignment scores will then sum up to one. And for this, we will use the softmax function, which leads to this definition. You can see then our new indicator is AIJ, which uh, just states that now our alignment scores are yeah, in a probability distribution. So, and as a last step, then we have our alignment scores, which are into, like, compressed into a probability distribution. So they sum up to one. And then we will calculate for each decoder step and context vector by using all of those alignment scores and multiplying them with the hidden encoder state. So the higher the alignment score is, the more of that particular hidden encoder state will be embodied in the context vector, which is then used for translating a particular word. Okay, now we have a good understanding how attention actually works, but that's not all. I guess you have heard about transformers and uh, maybe you're also watching this video to better understand transformers and when Wasvani and others published their paper and published also the architecture of transformers they also made a more generic definition of how attention works they didn't uh, use like alignment scores they brought into new three different words for it which is a little bit more uh, related to the information retrieval area so they have queries keys and values and yeah, let's look into how those are different and why those are a more generic definition of attention than the one we saw before. Okay, before we look into the mathematical terms of the generic attention, uh, I want to first show you the architecture, how it looked like when the transformers got introduced. It changed a little bit. So as we can see, not only the decoder has an attention mechanism, but also the attention mechanism is applied to the encoder, which was new at that time. And also the recurrent neural network cells have been replaced by feedforward neural networks. So uh, we don't 
have the autoregressive behavior anymore so we can compute or the inference time is very faster with this setup because we can parallelize uh, the computation of these individual cells. The transformer architecture brought two improvements which is uh, the one th uh, thing is like the attention mechanism for sure and the other thing would be the faster computation that was also allowed and possible then. The definition of our attention score has slightly changed. Instead of having previous decoder states, we now have a query vector. And instead of all the different en hidden encoder states, we now have different key vectors. And also, we don't have an alignment model anymore, which was before like a feedforward model. We now calculate the attention score, calculating the dot product of the query vector with the different key vectors. And uh, the higher the dot product is, the more relevance a certain input word has, basically. And the uh, key vector is derived from the input word, or to be more specific, the, the embedding of the input word. Besides the dot product, you can also see there is a fraction. And below that fraction, there's the square root of the parameter dk, which we haven't introduced yet. The dk parameter basically states the dimensionality of uh, the key vectors but uh, key vectors and query vectors have the same dimensionality, just uh, <laughs> saying at this point. And uh, why do we do that fraction? It's just to m scale a little bit our dot product to make it smaller, because otherwise the dot product become very large and this would counteract a little bit with the softmax function. So we, this could end up having very small gradients, which would prevent the model from learning properly. So I summarized attention weights and attention score because the attention weights are calculated as we have seen it before with using the softmax function to compress our attention scores into a probability distribution. And then we take these attention weights and calculate our final attention vector. It's also pretty similar to the one we have seen before. So we have our attention weights and we have value vector, which before was like the hidden encoder state. Now we call it value vector. And yeah, by calculating the dot product and summing, out, uh, summing it up for all the input words we have, we then calculate our final attention vector. And now finally, I want to show you a definition which not anymore consists of vectors, but instead uses matrices, which is just a faster way to compute all the different attention vectors instead of like calculating the attention vector for each decoder step or decoder token, we now use just matrices to do it all at once, which is just faster in, in practice. And Speaking of practice, after all this theory, now let's get started. Let's get into how to code the attention mechanism. Okay guys, now let's code the attention mechanism ourselves. For that, I found an already existing yeah, implementation using NumPy and SciPy for it from Stephanie Christina. I will also link down uh, where you can find that code. Like personally, I rather use PyTorch. So I wrote it myself in PyTorch. It's all the same, it's similar. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I will use this one to explain it to you. Uh, but if you prefer like uh, NumPy or SciPy, just feel free to check that out. I will link it down in the description box. Yeah, so first we need four different, I mean, like we, we could have any kind of words, you know, like a, a number or like the sequence is ambitious. So we can have three words, we could have four or five, it doesn't matter. Um, that's, uh, yeah, what we were talking in the start about, like sentences can be short or long, you know, it always varies, they're never the same. Um, but for this, we have four different words, which we, uh, yeah, represent like this. It's like a very small embedding. Usually it has way more dimensions than just three, but it's enough for uh, our example right now. Then we will stack them up. I can also show to you how uh, those are gonna look like, the embeddings. It's basically like we're bringing them into a matrix uh, instead of having single vectors, which I also said in the video, just uh, to have a faster computation in the end and now it's loading yeah now you can see like those are just different vectors we had here as a matrix now so then we will initialize our weight weight vector no weight matrices and i think in the video i didn't point that out enough but it's very important to know that so we have different query key and value matrices or vectors but the question is how do you actually calculate them and where are they derived from? 
and those are derived from the input embeddings but we will have certain weight matrices that actually uh, are used and we will apply to our input embeddings matrix like a matrix multiplication uh, with these individual matrices to calculate Q, key and weight like our uh, query key and value matrices and why is this so important to know because those uh, parameters inside here or weights are trained during models so they're optimized so this is actually how attention uh, creates representations of our uh, yeah like the input words and encodes them in a way that we later can use a query to find similar words or high relevant input embeddings again uh, so please keep that in mind it's very important to know and so here you can see we randomly initialize them with uh, in integer values in the range of uh, from 0 to 2 it's you know just random I just uh, it's based on how Stefania Christina did it in this uh, implementation and it's like a 3.3 .3 matrix this is because of uh, how like remember we have an input dimension of 3 so embedding dimension is 3 so we also have uh, 3 times 3 matrices here and yeah I can also show you one of them like as I said they're randomly initialized and during training they will be optimized and uh, yeah but not in our example it's just we, we just calculated one step and then that's it and the next thing is then <clears throat> We uh, yeah we'll calculate our different query key and value matrices doing uh, matrix multiplication with our input embeddings and the um, yeah individual weight matrices. That's what I said. Like the very important step to know that those are existing and are optimized during training. And then, as we have seen before, we will do a matrix multiplication with our query matrices and the transposed uh, key vector. So here we will. Uh, calculate our attention score and he, this basically means this is our DK like the dimensionality of our key vectors inside the K matrix and this is like a computational hack sometimes sometimes used instead of having like a square root you just yeah take a number uh, by the t power of 0.5 and this is like the square root in case you were wondering why we do that <laughs> instead of uh, yeah something like a square root here and but it's the same. And then next is the tension wage for that. We use the softmax function, put in our like attention scores. And finally, using our tension weights, which is also a matrix, I can show it to you here. Now we will uh, apply the matrix multiplication last time to our value vector. Uh, in practice, the value vector, speaking of like dimensionality, can vary from key and query vector, but those are uh, having the same dimensionality just the value vector can uh, be different from those two and yeah here you can see our final attention matrix uh, of course you know we didn't optimize our weights so don't expect too much what we can maybe see is like we pay a little bit higher attention to the third dimension or parameter in our input embeddings but you know this is very vague to talk about right now just an example of how to code the attention mechanism which in fact is quite easy to implement and yeah that's basically it that's the uh, walkthrough uh, of the coding and i hope you liked it yeah that's it for my second video on youtube i hope you liked it please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to the channel if you like the video and want to see more um, actually i plan to do it to be a little bit more practical because i feel like it ended up being very theoretical uh, my plan was to do a sentiment analysis using transformers to give you more practical view how transformers would work in that scenario. If you're interested in that, just comment below that you want a video about that. And until then, have a great time and cheers and peace out. <laughs>